Hello everyone and welcome back to another very special Kerbal Space Program video. You see today, I was just on the old internet and all that and someone tagged me in a picture of a Reddit post that I made seven years ago. A post that I submitted at five past four on the 25th of November 2014 on a Tuesday. Uh, if the uh, Reddit date is to be believed and I don't know why you wouldn't believe that but yeah. It was a post entitled, as someone who sucks at space planes, it was so satisfying to finally get an SSTO working. 10 upvotes, 86% upvoted, yes, my first ever SSTO ever that I ever got to work in Kerbal Space Program, I was so excited I shared a picture of it on the Kerbal Space Program forums and I thought, you know what, you know, it's almost, it is November, in 20 days, this thing's gonna hit its anniversary. So I thought, well, let's just, uh, I don't know. I just, just seeing, just seeing the post I was tagged and I was like, you know what? I want to make, I want to revisit this masterpiece. See, go back to my roots, see how I've improved. Or maybe you guys can see how I've improved and, uh, we can all maybe, maybe just go down a little journey together, I suppose. Now, uh, this Reddit post is the only surviving screenshot I have of this SSTO. So I was literally, I had Reddit, the Reddit post open on my second monitor and I was just building from that. So this is by no means a super accurate recreation. And uh, obviously another caveat is that some of the parts don't exist anymore. Like those front canards and those uh, little winglet things on the uh, rapier engines at the back, those pieces don't exist either. So it's kind of like a modern version of the SSTO in the post that I made all those years ago. So, you know, it's not complete one for one. But I think as far as the aesthetics go and as far as what is reasonably achievable in the latest version of Kerbal Space Program, I'd say I did a pretty good job. I did notice I forgot a couple of solar panels. Um, I just assumed that the two extendable solar panels on the top of the SSTO was it. But I since noticed whilst editing this video that were actually some solar panels on the on the bottom side as well. So, uh, oops, maybe this time next year I'll do this again. But for now, this is what you get. And here is the SSTO on the runway. Now I'm going to deliberately not time lapse the uh, ascent here because I want you to appreciate just how um, overpowered is probably the wrong word. I'd say ridiculously ridiculously high S uh, what's it called thrust to weight ratio look how quickly we're moving those um, rear wheels are way too far back on this on this SSTO for it to be able to reasonably take off you kind of want the wheels to act as a fulcrum on the center of mass but the speed that this thing gets is so ridiculous that it can pitch up fairly easily before the end of the runway and as you can see we are climbing at a fair old pace I'll have to start limiting our actual um, throttle gauge in order to stop ourselves from exploding from overheating yeah, very, very overbuilt. And I think another lesson I've learned here is that this uh, SSTO is very, very stumpy. I've mitigated against the stumpiness of this SSTO by having so many control surfaces at the back. What well, we've, uh, we've got the elevons and the wings themselves, obviously. Then we've got these um, those winglet things on the sides of the rapier engines. And we've got the, uh, the vertical stabilizers angled slightly outwards to act as some sort of uh, stabilize it, vertical stabilize it, pitch control I guess and there's another set of canards at the back to always act as pitch control to really stop ourselves from flipping out so yeah if I were to do this again and I have done so many times probably wouldn't have made this thing quite so stumpy and paper airplane looking I probably would have made this like but better that's gonna be a recurring theme right I would have just done this but made it better and not dumb but I don't know this is the first time I've like flown this since I guess I first flew it and you know, it's uh, it was a it was a real fun. It was really fun. I know this is like a really short video. I think it's probably less than ten minutes long. But I'm just saying, it's uh, it's fun to explore your roots sometimes. And I hope the uh, not I don't want to say it's awful, but the uh, the newbiness of this SSTO hopefully can serve as maybe some inspiration for you guys watching. I don't know how to say this next part without sounding completely arrogant. But basically, guys, I am just better than you. In every aspect, no, that was a little joke. But no, a lot of people watch these videos and think, oh, Matt, you're so good at Kerbal Space Program. How do I become so good at Kerbal Space Program? Thinking that I'm just like some deity uh, and I was just, I picked up the game and I was brilliant at it and it couldn't be further from the truth. I was, um, it did not come naturally to me, Kerbal Space Program. Uh, I was firing up those Scott Manley tutorials 
beyond the 100 hour mark. I, it was not that great at Kerbal Space Program. I think one of the reasons why I got so... I, I like to think I, I like to think I'm pretty good at this game. I don't I don't think I'm being arrogant by saying I'm I'm decent at Kerbal Space Program by this point. Hopefully, um, the reason I got so good at the game is because when I was a, when I was a student, which is when I first bought the game, I went on placements all over the United Kingdom uh, as part of my degree, and in a lot of these placement sites, there was no internet. I stayed in hellish flats, single rooms in shared kitchen areas, and they were like slums. Looking like like bloody hell. I can't, I'm being facetious, I'm not trying to be uh, insulting to anyone, but like I'm just saying, they were very, very run down and drab. They weren't very good, and most of them didn't have internet either. So I was sort of stuck with a hard drive of pirated TV shows I had. Watched a lot of It's Always Sunny back in the day. And um, the few Steam games I had, I didn't have that many Steam games at the time because I didn't have that much money. And of the Steam games I had, not many didn't have any DRM whatsoever. And Kerbal Space Program was one of those games that did not have DRM. So thank you, squad, for not putting DRM in your game. It's because that's the reason. That's the reason that I put so much time into this game. And I probably have convinced a number of people to buy this game. So there you are, game developers. Don't put DRM in your game because you might get someone like me who gets really way too into it and then tells other people to buy it. And then here we are now. Um, gosh, this, um, this commentary sounds really arrogant now when I say it back. I'm just saying... This is just my roots. I'm exploring my roots, and that's how I got into the game and played it a bit too much to this day, one could argue. And here we are in low carbon orbit. Didn't talk about anything relevant for the ascent. I'm just gushing right now. Gushing, is that the right word? I'm, I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing is, is, is probably the word here. It's, uh, it's uh, half past eight on a Friday night. I'm going to start cooking dinner as soon as I've done finished re recording this commentary. So no more, no more cuts, no more takes. I'm going to do this all in one go now. By the way, I'm going to put a screenshot of the Reddit post here. Uh, future Matt, it's 7.05. I'm going to just squiggle that down in my head. <laughs> I can put the Reddit post on screen so you can see if I managed to line that shot up well with the shot I got in the Reddit post. In fact, I'll probably put the, uh, the screenshot on screen before I actually said I would because I realized as soon as I said that, the, the scene started to change. So... Oops, whatever. Now we're going to go back to the Kerbal Space Center's runway. Now I know for a fact, when I took that original screenshot in that mission, I did not return to the Kerbal Space Program's... Kerbal Space Program... I'm, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm getting very excited, guys. Like I say, one take. I'm not going to redo that and say Kerbal Space Center. I'm just going to go ahead and continue on. I, I, I know for a fact that when I did that mission at the time, I did not return to the Kerbal Space Center's runway because I was just not skilled enough. And uh, I just felt at the time like, ah, that's impossible. No way that can be done. So I just landed any old where. So, today, all these years later, I said seven years earlier, but no, but like um, Reddit doesn't round years. It's actually eight years. Close, it's closer to eight years than seven years. So eight years on, I finally do the mission again. And this time, we play for keeps. This time, we land at the Kerbal Space Center's runway. And that could be a nice cyclical thing that all of these years later, I finally do the mission as I dreamed. As, as all I could have dreamed I could have been uh, doing that mission was uh, landing at the Kerbal Space Center's runway. And you know what? I criticized this craft earlier for being very stumpy and like it's going to be very easy to flip out of control. But my goodness, it actually flies pretty well. I guess that's, again, all those spammed control surfaces towards the back of the plane it really helps to force that center of lift backwards. But, uh, yeah, I still think regardless of all of that, it flies pretty well. And I guess we've got all those heavy things stuffed towards the front of the nose. So I guess it's not all that surprising. I don't know, what can I say? I'm just, uh, I'm just living in a bit of a, a little bit of a nostalgia trip right now. But yeah, um, how was your first SSTO? Have you made an SSTO? And by SSTO, I mean single stage to orbit, not single stage to ocean. Before someone makes that joke in the comments down below, I beat you. I beat you. Yeah, um... To address maybe some confusion that sort of players might have who haven't played the older versions of Kerbal Space Program, the reason I've got those yellow fuel lines there is that back in day when I built this SSTO, uh, those peripheral engines wouldn't have been able to pull fuel from the central tanks. You'd have had to build some sort of fuel line, like I've done here, uh, in order for the fuel to flow through the wings. Now, 
As you can see, we've lost our solar panels. I deployed the landing gear and it turns out the front gear, because it was attached to a cargo bay, it wouldn't deploy. So I had to open the cargo bay in order to deploy those wheels. And I forgot which action group I'd set to open the cargo bay doors and I accidentally pressed the action group button that deployed the solar panels and the solar panels got destroyed. That's why, that's what happened there. But yeah, there's my list of patrons, it's weird. It, what would it, if I went back in time and said to Matt that designed that graph that I've just flown, hey, you're going to have over half a million subscribers largely following you because of your ability to play KSP. I wouldn't believe you, and I still don't. And we've got Patreons. Their names are on screen. Thank you. Oh, this is the end of the video. Bye.